Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, someone asked me the other day how I go about targeting um, ground assets on Hoggett Georgia at war or Hoggett's Persian Gulf at war. They were saying that um, they use the, um, the F10 comms menu um, items and they then, you know, load up, fly to that location, and then they, by the time they get there, the the, the um, ground assets have been destroyed already by some other players on the server. This is something that's pretty common, actually, on the Hoggett servers. You know, there's no de-confliction of who's heading to what targets. There's no um, kind of frag orders or anything along those lines. It's just an open server where people can go and do whatever the hell they want without de-conflicting with other people. Now, obviously, in a real-world scenario, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Um, you'd actually have very well choreographed and orchestrated kind of flights, uh, sorties flying around trying to actually take out targets, you know, specific to them, rather than just this kind of free for all. But that's not how you know Hoggett works, right? And so, you know, the 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 likelihood is that if you if you just sortie up, not kind of do a little bit of planning ahead of time, there's a, a very good chance that you might get there and you got nothing to drop your bombs on. So I thought I'd put this video up uh, and kind of mention the things that I do uh, to try and make sure that I'm able to to be effective on some kind of target once I get into the air on one of the Hoggett servers. The first thing that I do is I plan and I, I do that planning on two real assets. The first is Hoggett's web GCI system. So WebGCI is available via a website, and, and what Hoggett does is it it, it um, keeps the telemetry information or takes the telemetry information from the server and actually throws that up on a, a website that, that's interactive and gives you kind of full, clear visibility of what's happening on the server. Uh, now, I use this by, uh, you know, finding, identifying, and, and selecting a ground target or a series of ground targets that I want to go and take out. And, you know, so I, I plan ahead of time. And so if I see some targets that are going to be closer to, say, one of the super carrier or the or the um, the regular carrier, I, I might sortie from there if I'm in the Hornet. Um, if it's a land-based target and it's closer to, say, we're in uh, the Persian Gulf and it's closer to Al-Dafra, then, um, then I might, you know, launch from Al-Dafra. I might not, you know, again, I'll just, I'll plan it out. I'll, I'll actually come up with a plan before I actually commit to anything. I'll, I'll have a plan. And, and sometimes that planning happenings, ha sorry, that planning happens outside of the sim. I actually just do it using WebGCI, giving me a good understanding of, you know, what's the battle space look like. And then I'll choose some specific targets. If you don't want to use WebGCI, obviously, the F10 map is another option. The F10 map does give you, it's it's not nearly as uh, articulate about what's at each of the locations as the WebGCI system is. However, the F10 map does give you visual indications of where targets are. Um, and it, it's it's a, it's a quick way of seeing once you're in the sim about you know where, especially in relation to you, are the bad guys that you want to be taking out. So that's the first thing I'll do is I'll plan using WebGCI and the F10 map. The second thing I'll use, and the, the user that, that uh, asked the question said that he uses the F10 commands, but I'll use the F10 commands. I know it's it's not exactly easy to navigate through them, uh, and it's, it's uh, not particularly effusive of the information that it gives you, uh, but it does say actually, you know, where in relation to you are strike locations or seed locations or battlefield air interdiction uh, locations that you can actually go and see if you can start to... Um, to prosecute the enemy a little bit. And so I will use those F10 commands. It's especially useful for getting um, uh, coordinate locations, uh, but also you can use WebGCI to get that, um, where you know if you, if you go onto the WebGCI system and you click on an asset, it will tell you exactly, you know, using precise coordinates, what the uh, geographic location and altitude, um, or sorry, elevation of, of that target is. So that's the other thing I'll do. I'll use the F10 commands. Thirdly, well, you know, sometimes even F10 uh, WebGCI, you know, it just it just doesn't give you the information or the, the you know the F10 um, uh, commands in the in the in the comms menus. They just don't give you any information about what's actually happening at a site. So, for example, the WebGCI system, it'll put vehicles on a on a map for you, but it won't actually tell you if there are kind of strategic targets there, like some of the um, 
the factories or the power plants or you know these types of targets it won't actually give you any indication about whether those targets are actually standing or if they're if they've been predominantly destroyed and so and this sounds crazy but what i do in that case is i have a look at web gci i see if someone's roughly in the geographic area uh, that i'm looking to fly and i jump on comms and i just ask them hey man um i'm planning on heading over to that target can would you mind doing an overflight and seeing if you can visually recce the site for me i i know it sounds funny but usually on a multiplayer server you can, you're going to find people that are really open to kind of communicating like this because the entire point for being on a multiplayer server is so that you can interact with other humans rather than having to rely on the what i will say is substandard wingman ai that's in um dcs and so i'll just jump on comms now i use srs i like using srs uh, I think it's, you know, using my voice is far better than typing into the into the chat box. But if you don't want to use SRS, well, what the hell's wrong with you? But no, no, seriously, if you don't want to use SRS, just fire up the 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 chat, bo uh, chat box using tab or in this case, shift tab, fire it up and just type your message in. Say, look, you know, I'm, I'm planning on heading to this target roughly in this location, or you can give the uh, the cover term that, that uh, the system gives for that location and say, uh, I'm planning on heading up there. And can anybody just do a quick recce for me and, um, and see what's there? Um, you don't have to blat it out to everybody. I would, you know, specifically try and find somebody that's in the area and actually say to that person, you know, dude, do you mind, uh, do you mind going and doing an overflight for me? Um, a lot of times you'll get someone that comes back and they'll be really honest and they'll say, man, I'm, I'm really busy right now. I'm really sorry. I mean, in that case, you got to deal with it. A lot of times you'll actually get someone that comes back and says, yeah, yeah, I don't mind at all, man. Um, give me a second. I'll, I'll make my way over there, which is pretty cool. So that's the third thing I'll do. I'll actually communicate. <laughs> it's a multiplayer server. There's a bunch of other people on there. Communicate with them. It's, it's what you're there for. The fourth thing I'll do is... Um, I'll always have a, a, a backup plan. So if I get off the ground and start heading towards a target and somebody else is already heading for that target and they hit the targets before I get there and there's just nothing left, I'll always have a backup plan. And I do this in the Hornet using um, the navigation system. So what I actually do is I'll set waypoints, like configure, you know, manually configure waypoints for two or even sometimes three different target locations, rough target locations. And what that'll allow me to do is say, okay, I'm going up, I'm heading up towards um, waypoint seven. Waypoint seven was my primary target. Ah, waypoint seven has been blown to shit. There's two A10s over it and there's just, it's a smoking hole in the ground right now. Fine, I'm gonna retask and, and head for waypoint eight because I know that waypoint eight is you know, 30, 40 miles away, but it's another set of targets. And you're heading there, oh shit, they've been hit as well. To hell with it, I'm heading for, for um, waypoint nine. So I'll just have this backup plan and I'll, I'll have the waypoint set before I leave the ground. I'll have those set. Even then, right, even then, if I get in the air, so the reason I set them on the ground is because it's a lot easier to manually input uh, waypoints when you're on the deck, when you're not having to, you know, your pilot workload is relatively low. If you're not though, and you get in the air and your target's been taken out, Use WebGCI, either have it on a separate screen or, or you know, even get it on an iPad or even on a phone or something along those lines because it'll give you the information you need. But then find another set of targets and then set another waypoint for it. And if you want to do it in the air, do it in the air, right? So there's a, there's a hint there. You need to understand how to input whatever airframe you're flying. I fly the Hornet. Whatever airframe you're flying, just be ready to input a, a manually configured waypoint on the fly when you're in the air. And if you don't know how to do it, you know, there'll be YouTube videos on it, head over to the tactical DCS community that, you know, they're really helpful over there. Whatever the case is, learn how to manage your navigation system and input new waypoints on the fly, All right? So, and, and just be ready to retask, right? That's point number four, be prepared to retask once you get in the air. And finally, the fifth thing, and this seems, simple but i've seen so many servers that don't get this right and including hoggett sometimes uh you get people that that um they jump on the server and they're like hey i'm an i'm an air-to-air -air guy i'm flying air-to-air -air, right and you will jump on the server and the server's covered in cap assets you know bad guys can't even get off the ground right because 
You know, there's so much cap in the air and we're just pummeling them on the, on, in the air, but nothing's happening, uh, you know, in the air to ground mission. Equally, you know, you can, you can jump on a server and there's so many air to ground assets. There's A-10s everywhere, but man, there, there's no cap cover. And so, you know, those ground assets are getting their ass kicked. Sorry, those air to ground assets are getting their ass kicked because there's no cap cover. So the first thing I'd say is if you're a multi-role pilot, choose a role depending on what the server needs. And there's different ways you can do that. Again, I use WebGCI. I'll jump on the server and I'll have a look at you know the rough composition of airframes that are on there. If you can see a bunch of F-15s and a bunch of A-10s, you know that there's a balance. If you can see a bunch of F-15s and 16s and, and 18s, it gets a little bit more complex. But you should be able to, using WebGCI, kind of conf figure out what they're doing based on their location, uh, their altitude, you know, these types of things. You can use WebGCI to give you the intelligence that you need to be able to make an informed decision about what that server is lacking, what it needs. So a bunch of times I'll jump, I'll jump in and I'll see that there are a bunch of um, SAM assets, uh, enemy uh, integrated air defense systems. And, you know, I might not want to fly um, a seed or a, a, a destruction of enemy air defense mission in that, you know, at that time. I might want to fly CAP, but it's not needed. So I'll jump into that kind of seed role or deed role and, and go and see if I can take out some SAMs. It's because it's what's needed on the server. And that's the, the, the compelling thing there. Again, you're on a multiplayer server where you're part of a team, right? You're all part of a team. Um, and, you know, I'm specifically talking about PVE environments, but this, you know, these, these rules all apply for PVP as well. Um, you need to be part of the team. And if the team needs someone to take out, you know, enemy... Uh, air defense systems, then go and take out the enemy air defense systems. Be that guy, right? Like be the be the guy on the team that that takes one for the team and, and does something that you wouldn't necessarily do. The joy of that as well is that if you go into everything thinking I'm an air to air guy and that's all I'm ever going to do, well, you, you get exposed to some different things. You get to learn some new skills, which is, you know, a fantastic, awesome thing about DCS, right? Is, is learning new things and trying different things. That's the joy of simulation. Right, that's it. Those are my five tricks. To recap there, use WebGCI in the F10 map to plan. Use uh, F10 commands to figure out and, and gain and build situational awareness. Uh, ask on comms if you need to have a bit more information. You think there's a human out there that can help you out. Be prepared to retask, especially once you get in the air. And then finally, be a team guy and uh, choose a role that's needed on that server. That's it for today's video, folks. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, look after each other. Samurai is RTB.